Next on our to-do list is the exploratory factor analysis. You can see here in the order of operations, we've just done data screening and case screening and all that. And now we're on EFA. So let's do it. We're already ready. The data is all prepped for us. So analyze. Let's see, dimension reduction factor. What do we want? All of it, except ID. Oh, it didn't resort. What a bugger. Let's do that first. Variable view, sort by name. Uh, sure, sort ascending. Nope, we're good. All right, and then I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way. Let's see, age, education, experience, frequency, gender, and ID. I'm gonna move all these down to the bottom. There we go. Okay, now let's go do factor analysis. Analyze, dimension reduction, factor. And control A, accept the bottom, hold shift, click the last one, and stick it over there. Descriptives. I would like to see a reproduced and a KMO. I'd like some maximum likelihood. And I'm going to do it based on eigenvalues. Um, this just lets SPSS decide how many factors to extract. Now we know we need, what is it? Let's go look at our model. We know we need, here it is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables. So we could just constrain it right here, fixed number of factors to seven, but let's just see if it plays out all right. Continue, rotation, I would like Promax, continue, options, I'm going to sort by size and suppress small coefficients. How small? I'm going to suppress all the way up to 0.3. Why? Because I don't want to accept any loading that's less than 0.5. So it's, that's 0.2 away, which is acceptable. And hit OK, and hope for the best. I actually haven't done this yet, so we're learning together. OK, we got a 0.933 for our KMO. That is good. That is very good, actually. Anything above 0.7 is fine. Above 0.8 is good, and above 0.9 is great. Significance should be significant. It almost always is. If it isn't, that is a huge red flag that there's something wrong. We look at our extraction column of the communalities table, and we're looking for any values that might be below 0.3. Um, if it's below 0.3, then yeah, there might be some issues with uh, correlating with other items. So everything's looking pretty good. There's a 0 0.308. That's borderline decision quality 8. Do, 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 do. Looking, looking, and it looks pretty good. It's just decision quality 8. Now I wonder, was decision quality 8 one of our problem childs over here? Decision quality one, and no, not one of the ones with issues. I guess it would have just been in this, actually, not in the missing area. Okay, so we're good on communalities. Total variance explained. We're going to look in this cumulative percent um, column, and we want more than 60%, so we're good here. And look, we actually extracted seven factors, just like we expected, so that's pretty good. We're going to skip the factor matrix. Look at the goodness of fit test. Almost never will you see a non-significant value here, but that is what you want, something non-significant. But that's all right. We have a huge data set, 300 and what was it, 80 um, responses. So we're not going to get a significant there because it's based on the chi-square, which is dependent upon the sample size, and it's inflated with sample size. So scroll down. We look at the bottom of this huge matrix, and we see that we have 33 or 3% non-redundant residuals. And that's good. Anything less than 5% is just fine. Here's the, the one we're looking for, the pattern matrix. And it's looking pretty good, actually. Oh, here we are. InfoQual has some potential issues here. All right. So what do we do first with this uh, pattern matrix? And by the way, we don't need to look any lower at this point. We need to resolve the pattern matrix. Hmm. Well, we can do a number of things. We can get rid of the lowest loading items, like this, decision quality six. Or we can get rid of cross-loading items. That's probably a better way to start. <clears throat> or 
We can look for items that don't load anywhere. I don't think there are any of those. Looks like everything loads somewhere, so that's good. Nothing is a negative loading, so that's good. So, let's start this way. There is no right answer, and so I'm just gonna sort of finagle my way through this. We see that info uh, acquisition is loading on decision quality. So what do I wanna do? Well, info acquisition only has five items. Decision quality has eight items. Let's start with decision quality because maybe if I get rid of decision quality six or maybe eight, then we'll see that info acquisition is no longer very related. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Makes sense to me. We learned that decision acquisition eight or quality eight we had a low communality. You may recall from up here, where's that point 308? There is decision quality eight. So I'm actually gonna start with that one, even though decision quality six has the lower loading. So let's do this factor analysis. Go to decision quality eight. I'm gonna drop it out, hit okay. I'm gonna go just straight back down to that pattern matrix. We can see decision quality six dropped quite a bit, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. These still two, these two still load there. So let's just go get rid of number six. There it is, decision quality six. Okay, jump to pattern matrix. That's looking pretty good. Oh, that's usefulness. Let's go to decision quality, it moved down. We got some point fives here, which they're fine for now. Um, we might remove them later, we'll see. And oh, look. Hey, this one, uh, Info Act 5, is no longer loading on decision quality, so that's good. Um, but it is a 0.454, so that's not good. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and get rid of hmm, Info Act 4, I think is our best bet, because it's loading in both places, although the loading is separated by more than 0.2 and it's loading strong, more strongly here. Eee, this is a tough decision. I think what I'm gonna do is drop Info Act 5 and then see what happens, and then drop Info Act 4 and add 5 back in if necessary. So let's start with Info Act, Info Act 5. Removed, hit OK, jump to Pattern Matrix. Still, that's, it's, that's now it's within point 0.2. Hmm. Let's Try again. I'm going to stick info act back in uh, number five, and I'm going to go get rid of number four and just see if that makes a difference. Oh, now we don't have seven. Whoa, now they all loaded on <laughs> decision quality. That's not good. So info act four was holding us together. Yikes. Let's go get rid, uh, let's go add info act four back in and drop five. Okay, so we're back to where we were, right here. This one's overlapping quite a bit, whatever. Let's see, if we, <coughs> we still have several items to play with over here. So if we were to drop decision quality seven, would that help? Um, or decision quality one? Let's find out. Because those, we, there's sort of wiggle room right there. Go down to decision quality seven. Drop that out, hit OK. Pattern matrix. There's decision quality. And oh, look, these bumped up. And, and, ooh, ooh, and they're no longer loading on decision quality. Oh, that's awesome. OK. And this is mostly fine. Um, we could drop decision quality one if we wanted. Um, you know, I'm just going to do it, keep all these fairly high. We have enough of them to, to, uh, to work with. Decision quality one, boom. And hopefully that doesn't ruin anything. If so, we'll just put it back in. Here's decision quality. We have four of them now. They're fairly high, all above 0.7, and all of these are fairly high. So we're good. Excellent. Oh, that's a relief. Okay, we look at the others. Low of 0.67, that's fine. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, that's a little low. Playfulness one. Um, it, it's, you know, it's above the 0.5. And averaging out, I think we average over 0.7, so I'm going to leave it. 0 0.6, 0 0.6, so we're good, actually. This is very good. So now that we have a pattern matrix that we're happy with, let's go back up to the KMO. Looks like it's still great. Significant, good. Extraction, do, 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 still good. 
And oh, we're actually explaining more variance now. That's 66 percent. Here's the goodness and fit test. Not significant still because we have a huge sample size. Reproduce matrix. We're down to two percent. That's excellent. We know the pattern matrix is good. And so, what's the next step? Here we are. Iterate until you arrive at a clean pattern matrix. Check. Adequacy. Well, that's the KMO and Bartlett's and communalities and total variance explained, all of which were good. So we're good there. Convergent validity. Let's go look at that. Convergent validity is, do they load highly on their factor? Um, and what is high? Well, it depends on your sample size. For our sample size, over 300, anything above 0.3 is actually acceptable, although I would never accept anything that was less than a 0.5. Um, and I'd want them to average out to above 0.7 if possible. So this one definitely averages out above 0.7. This one, yes, yes. Yes, 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 and probably, maybe, maybe not. Pretty close though. Um, but the loadings are high enough to be convergent, you might say. Discriminant validity, well, that is, are there no cross loadings? Yep, no cross loadings within point two. And if you go down here to the factor correlation matrix, are there any correlations between the factors? that are greater than 0.7. So we look, look, look. I see some 0.5s. 0.6 is pretty high. That's 5 and 7. I'm guessing that's info, info acquisition and decision quality. Let's go check it. 5 and 7. Here's 5. That's decision quality. Yep, and 7 is info acquisition. So these are highly related, but not to the 0.7%, um, or not percent, not to the 0.7 level, which is if you just square it, 0.49, and that is a percent of uh, correlation. So they, they're, that would be 49% correlated, which is almost half, which is just too much. In this case, it's 0.6 squared, which is uh, 0.641 times 0.641. We're, about, we're sharing about 41% of our variance between those two factors. That's a lot, but not uh, too much to handle. So we're good on discriminant validity. And then reliability. Ah. The reliability is Cronbach's alphas. So let's do those. We go to Analyze, Reliability. Where are you? Oh, Quality Control? Nope. Bum, 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 bum. Classify? Nope. Scale? There it is. Scale, Reliability. And I'm going to start with Usefulness. We didn't remove anything from Usefulness. So I just throw all seven in there, hit OK. And I find that I have a 0.943 for my Cronbach's alpha. What do I want? Above 0.7. Ideally, above 0.6 is even OK, um, but I would much prefer above 0.7. So that one's great. And, excuse me, where did it go? Reliability analysis. We do another one. Get rid of all those. Playfulness. Did we remove any? I don't think we did. We thought about it, but we didn't. Do it, 0.912, and you can do this for all of them. And you want to make sure that everything is above um, 0.7. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of them, and then make a table so that you can see it. I'm going to pause the recording for now. Okay, I finished. I did the composite or the Cronbach's alpha for each one, and then I went ahead and copied the pattern matrix into a Word document and added a new row for Cronbach's alpha. And I should probably bold that so it's really obvious. In fact, probably bold all of it. There we go. And so now we know for each factor what the Cronbach's alpha was. That is our reliability. And is that everything? Yes, it is. We're done with exploratory factor analysis. Yes.